apologies for that, guys. We've uh, had a few technical dramas tonight, so we'll come back on and broadcast. Haven't missed too much. Richard Hansen, however, is just on everything that's ha been happening. It was dumb. Just as these guys are trying to lap these McLarens, Andrew Renz has dropped the wheel off on the brakes and then made contact with Richard Hampstead. Wouldn't surprise me if that's done a little bit of rear right suspension damage to Richard Hampstead's car. It was a fair bit of contact. Yeah, so we've got the replay up on screen now. So coming down into the chicane, Richard Hampstead really harassing the back of uh, Matthew Barron. And oh, there you go. Just a little bit of contact bit of damage to the side of the car and very unfortunate incident for uh, Richard Hansen after a great run. Yeah, he's still pressing on though. He's he's managed to close that margin to Matthew Barron once again, but I'd say it would have bent the car just slightly. These cars are so fragile, but he, he's pushing on as we said. It's unfortunate incident and it's happened so easy. It's, oh, John Emerson. Yeah, these guys are so close, and also Brad Ryan just up the road ahead in third position. These guys are fighting hard. This top six is so close. As all these McLaren, McLaren's oh, lost it in front of Brad Ryan. Oh, that was so close. John Emerson almost had a moment there with them coming up on that McLaren too. So we spoke about it awkward. This was going to be to jump out of the way in that S bend, and oh man, that McLaren Aerospace was going to be able to jump out of the way in that S bend, and oh man, that McLaren out of Edward Van Velsen nearly lost it then in front of the field. That was so close. Yeah, it's uh, so easy to do. I've done a few laps around here this week, and you just, it's funny that you go to Richard Hempstead is all over Matthew Barron. Just look up the road a bit. They've got McLaren's in the braking zone. This is going to get awkward down here. They're going to go three wide. It's going to thread the needle. Oh, Oh, Matthew Barron's deep. Oh, what a hold up. He's done great effort to uh, pull that up. That's been incredibly intense. Watch for turn one here. These guys are going to be on it at turn one. Richard Amstead tries to line up a run. I don't think he'll be close enough. Matthew Barron will cover. No, he's gone back to the line. Great driving from both those guys around lap traffic. Kept it clean. John Emerson, sorry, he's grabbed Brad Ryan as well in all that lap. It's Brad Ryan very, very close down the hill. I was 100% committed there. Oh, there's snap code between the two. Oh, oh chick pack there in the McLaren. Oh, Did all the wrong place there. Very he was trying to get out of the way, trying to get out of the way, but those guys are in such a furious oh. battle pack. There was nothing he could do. just been mugged going through that last test. Got a little bit of curve and then oh, just a little bit of a neck code got loose and fortunate enough to have a bigger incident, lost a couple of spots out of it. It's extremely lucky, but these Riley prototypes, these top six cars are absolutely fighting for sheep stations at the moment. They're so close. Yeah, Matthew Barron's doing a great job, man. Oh, Hammer's got a run on him. They're going in. Hammer's got him. This would be a great move. See, Baron will try for the crisscross. Doesn't quite get it up the hill. Now, Richard Hampstead's got good pace. I think he was getting held up just a little bit behind Matthew Baron. However, Baron's now got Hammer's draft. So, we'll have to see if Hampstead pulls the margin. Oh, don't hit that curve too often there. Matthew, that will shoot the car sideways. Yeah, we do know that Matthew Barron has more experience in this car than Richard Hampstead. This is Richard Hampstead's, I'd say, one of his first races in the Riley prototype, so he probably won't be as consistent as Matthew Barron. However, he's doing a great job at the moment. He jumps out to grab the draft from that lap McLaren straight away. Yeah, it's been a... So, it's been, it's been, it's been sort of uh, forgotten about these McLarens, <coughs> apart from seeing them being lapped by... Uh, DPs, we haven't really touched on the battle. Baron's got a run. He's actually looking back up the inside of Hampstead. He's got the move done. He's far enough up. He's got him back. What a move. Well done by Matthew Baron. 
It's Brad Ryan and John Emerson are side by side now. Behind as well in third. Brad Ryan's going to go the long way. Two wide to the last corner. Oh, my. This is such quite close racing. Looking to make it three wide. He wants to see his boys battle. They're still too wide. Like, they can't go too wide through here. It just cannot be done. No, John Emerson backs out. Great Gives this track space up. That was fantastic racing. They both gave each other so much respect there. Their, their previous teammates, they both used to drive for Lazy Man Racing, so you could see the respect shown for each other there in that battle. Not quite a straight enough exit, but he will get a good draft effect down here behind Baron. He'll be all over him in the braking zone. The other thing there, it sounded like Richard Hampstead was actually on the re on the um, rev limit or in fifth gear. So that's another thing, because you can um, customise all the gear ratios in the prototype. Some of these cars are better suited to the passing on the back straight. But John oh. Emerson's wide at the last corner. Avril has a look. Oh. Chris Osborne's now going to have a look up at turn two. He can't do it there, though. That's too brave of a place to do it. Mitch Abrol's got a run on Emerson, sorry, just, just quickly, they're too wide again. Oh, Emerson's gone Emerson wide. Won. Oh, they're going to be too wide the whole length of the back straight here. Chris Osborne's going to get a double draft effect. Chris Osborne's not going to know which side to go for. I'd imagine he's going to go for the inside and try and pounce on Mitch Abrol. He can't, he's boxed in, he can't go anywhere. John Emerson will cover the inside, Avril Hall goes outside. Into the braking zone, this is going to be tight, hold on to it. He's just got to get it. Watch Rosborne, he's going to get them both if they're not careful here. Still run two by two. This is brave at the last corner, it's a flat out corner. Oh, they, how do they keep doing that? Chris Osborne's got the here run, go. he's going to go three, three wide. wide. That's got to, oh, no, no. out of it. Wow. This is still too wide and abrol has got the place. Wow, this is great racing. Great racing from those guys. So much respect. Osborne just cut that corner a little bit. I'd say he'll get a slowdown for that. Unbelievable. How they managed to do half a lap and DP too wide. That's just incredible. Yeah, that was great driving by those three drivers then. That was truly amazing. We've seen that twice now with those guys run side by side through turn one, turn two, it's just amazing driving. And uh, while well, we got a bit of a breath, well, uh, Richard, uh, Matthew Barron has managed to screw down to a one second gap now over Richard Hampstead. And uh, it's managed to open it up a little bit, so maybe a little bit of that damage coming into play for Richard, or he's just used up his tyres a little bit, so. Just looking back at the McLarens, it's all fairly spread out. Oh, oh and Emerson's taking Abra Hall around. Nose to tail contact at the chicane. Oh, we'll go for a replay of that. We'll see what happens. John Emerson's out, broken himself. He's just nailed the back of Mitch Abrahall there. Unfortunately, those guys are having a great battle. Dylan just gets out of the way. Let's John Emerson through it. Oh, unfortunately, it's a no. John will be kicking himself. He won the yeah, he's actually. Nah, no way. And he's actually readdressed the accident as well. And let Mitch Abrahal go back ahead uh, great, great as he respect. continues to do so. That's great driving from John Emerson. He's recognised that he's made an error there and he's readdressed it. Of course, we don't really have a penalty system in place here. So, um, yeah, that's great sportsmanship. Unfortunately, though, it looks like Mitch Abrahal may have a little bit of damage. He's really struggling. Yeah, it's so easy just to throw off the um, arrow of these cars. They're so finely tuned with... Uh, Carbon fiber, just a little bit of contact. You can just bend the steering. Yeah. A little bit of Although power. it was 
Although it was square in the in the tail, it looks like he might have a little bit of rear suspension damage. The wings all look fine. It's the rear suspension. There's TTL ahead. Battle Reg Burke is going to get the move done. I'd say John Emerson will have quite a bit of damage to the front of his car too. He, he did hit the back of Aberhall quite hard and you can see a fair bit of aero damage on the front of that one so that car won't be handling at its best anymore. No. Coming up to almost halfway through this race, <laughs> Unfortunately the battles, yeah I was going to say the battles are now spread out a little bit with that accident but Richard Hampstead still trying to close margin to Matt, Matthew Barron but Barron's doing a great job in the lead of the DP class. Likewise is Dylan Sharman, he's putting on a dominating display in McLaren class. 16 seconds is not out. Great effort Stretch that margin out. Not get too worried about the uh, McLarens as I oh, showed the DPs as they battle past. They're going to be pretty fortunate that they don't have any points. So. Well, um, we do have Edwin Van Velsen on the back of Warwick Chickpack here. Putting the pressure on, and that is for 6th and 7th place in the McLaren GT3 class. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was just about to say. Yeah, they actually look like they got a little bit more pace than Hingston at the moment. So, Hingston's going to have a mirror full of McLaren very, very shortly. Might uh, go at the gains and losses. So we'll go through the uh, McLaren field. Dylan Sharman's held station. A few uh, things. No real big movements as shakers. Bruce Joy's uh, managed to get up five spots with five goals with that early race spin. Lost eleven spots and. I've actually seen David Hingston now. We spoke about him coming under pressure. Warwick has actually got round Hingston, and Hingston is now under pressure from Edward Van Velsen as he gets very, very crossed up. So not sure whether Hingston's is having a little bit of tyre drama or, or what, but he seems to have just dropped a little bit of pace. We saw him on the move forward earlier tonight, but he's dropped, dropped back a little bit now. It's just, just catch a locker break or have a little slide and you can overheat the tyres and it just takes a lap or two just to settle them back down, normalise the pressures again as Edward Van Velsen gets a nice run. He might have a look up the inside and the line will be close. Oh, Hingston very, very late on the break. Gets it stopped though. did a good job to, uh, to slow that thing down. Very late at Edward. Very cool. Oh, we've got a bouncing uh, Warwick there. Yeah, looks like <laughs> looks like I'm driving that car by the looks of it. <laughs> Edward Van Velsen is all over him. It's a bit of bump drafting here, possibly. Yeah, as he gets nice and close to the car. This is a hard place you want to get a pulling line here. Make sure, hope that the driver in front is not there, Mark. I don't know if you're on your line. So blind through there and down here. Yeah, it's hard enough when there's no cars in front of you, let alone when you're looking at the back of it. A big McLaren rear wing, you just can't see anything. Is Van Velsen extremely sideways? Still having the moment down the road. Oh, God, that was so close to being in the concrete. Kingston's run wide. Wheel spin there, wheel on the grass. He's lost all his drive. He's got to be careful that he doesn't get repassed here because Hingston's going to have the draft now. It is on the wrong side of the track though. He breaks so deep though. No, Van Velsen takes the place.
Bit of traffic maybe coming into play for Matthew Barron. He's uh, lost a fair bit of time there. He was out to about one and a half seconds at one point, so. Yeah, I'd say Matthew Barron's going to be getting pretty sick of seeing the six boost TTL car right behind him. Hampstead's done a great job of keeping Barron's mirrors full all race. However, Barron's done a great job of not making any mistakes. He's he's driven so consistently thus far. Just looking in, uh, in my end, I can see Hammer's windscreen is very, very dirty. And that's another thing that really affects you when you're following someone so closely is the dirty windscreens. They really do build up as the race wears on. And Richard Hampstead's going to be having that drama at the moment. Seems he's lost a little bit of ground now. So I reckon, definitely reckon I was chucking the game in the lane that I pulled out uh, Matthew there for a bit. He's already thrown out the gap to 0.8 now, so half a second this lap almost. The interesting thing I was just watching there, down that whole back straight, Richard Amstead did have Matthew Barron's draft, but he was actually no faster in a straight line than Matthew Barron. So I had heard rumours that the TTL cars were possibly using a fair bit more wing than anyone else, and it seems to be really hurting Richard. Let's see if we can't find a replay out, but I think Richard Amstead was uh, he's disappeared. He was running in fourth place. Uh, have to go back a little bit further than that, but it looks he's like... he's just looks like he's actually he's just dropped out by the looks of it. He's gone off the road. He's just gone off the road on the back straight, and the car's disappeared from the race. So I'm not too sure what's happened there. Got the replay screen now. So coming through the oh, a little bit loose there through the uh, hairpin. Coming down the back straight now, so. I wonder if he's had some internet troubles or if he's, uh, yeah, he's just disappeared, so, unfortunately. Yeah, it's uh, a weird one. It looks like internet drama is his quiet air that he's just dropped out of the out of the race. So, yeah, it was an internet drama for Christopher Osborne, unfortunately. Uh, it's back up on Matthew Barron now. With We've got... We've also got Wayne C. Burke about to make a move on Paul o. Martins in the McLaren class. He's all over him. Down the inside oh, into the chicane. Slide on the brakes. Great drop, Jim, that move done. Yeah, that was a good pass. Paul Martins was trying his best to keep him behind there, but Wayne Burke did a great job. Auric and Edward Van Helsen having a great tussle as they get past by the DP leaders. Yeah, these guys have been having a race long battle. There's still. Oh, Van Helsen extremely oh. sideways off the curb. Just, that's just. Looking up the road, Richard Amstead's having a look at the outside of Matthew Barron. He's not going to be able to get it done here. Be looking for the crisscross coming into the back straight. He's going to do it now. He goes up the inside. He's too sideways. Matthew Barron will get the drive. He'll, he'll also have the inside line into the chicane. Richard needs to slot in back here. Get back in. Get that drive going again. Pulls the nose out, he's going to be around the outside though, if he can hold around the outside. He's, he's going to have to break so line. deep. They both extremely late on the brakes. Richard tries to, you can't get it done there on the outside. Barron takes the corner back. Great driving by these two, great respect shown. Something's happened, Brad Ryan's off the road at the end of the Nelson. straight. Also involved, he's had a spin. Yeah. Something happened there between those two. Let's see if we can get a replay out the screen. Yeah, they've been. Brad Ryan's tried to thread the needle between the two McLarens, and it's it's similar to the accident earlier we saw. The McLarens dropped the wheel off under brakes, and it's launched him sideways into Brad Ryan's DP and put him hard into the concrete. He's just trying to give the room. He knows it's three wide. He doesn't want to uh, hold up the uh, DP too much, but it's an unfortunate incident for, uh, for Brad Ryan and Edward. Yeah, I, feel, I really feel for Brad Ryan. He's had a shocking run in, in all of his races recently. He's just had no luck, and tonight, unfortunately, his luck hasn't improved, and that'll be game over for him. That was hard under the concrete. Yeah, he's in pit lane now, obviously trying to get some of that damage repair. Another battle is heating up. Bredsburg and Mitchell Averhall threading their way through traffic. Averhall will yeah, just get into the top four. 
Sorry, just having a look, Richard Hampstead was just too aggressive on the kerb in this previous lap, and he's actually had a big excursion through the grass about half a lap ago, so he's dropped around about two seconds to Matthew Barron. The driver we haven't really talked about this race, Anthony Koenig doing a fantastic job in third place, no. Yes, certainly is with Brad Ryan's accident on the last lap. Kernich is all the way up there. Kernich more known for his oval racing ability, but he's certainly doing a great job on the road tonight. As uh, Mitch Abrahol looks to have a bit of move down at Bridgeburg. Almost got into him in the uh, chicane there, but coming down into turn one. Hard players to uh, just want to make sure you stay nice and close. Keep on the run to get that draft down towards the hairpin line. Right. Yeah, Reg Burke's done a good job actually tonight. He didn't qualify, and I don't think he was really. He's done a great job to, to be running as high as. Steady, um, up the spot, Mitch, Sean Kelly gained a few spots, Brad Ryan, Chris Rosborn and Dale Deese, all big losers with damaged cars. Go There's a bit of a battle here for with, um, Martin Turner and Corey Osborne. And that's for third and fourth in the McLaren class. Probably the most important corner on the track. Down into that chicane is the best passing place on the circuit. So to get this right angled 90 degree corner there, perfect on the exit, is very, very difficult to do with the cars travelling so slowly in the mid corner. Going through that corner as well as Mitch Abrol and Regsburg. Mitch Abrol all over the back. It's, it's a draft good enough for him to um, gain up. Coming down towards this chicane, such a hard corner to get the pass. Oh, they both touched the He's grass! He's on grass. <laughs> it's Mitch Abrol taking some out of the Oh, Regsburg's so deep under brakes. Oh, he's had a He's got slide. a poor exit, though. And it'll give Mitch Abrol some oh, incentive. Regsburg continues to carry the moment, though, all the way down the hill. Abrol is all over him here. Will be close enough into turn one? No, I think it's better of it. Great place to be going side by side, although we have seen some side by side driving there tonight. Going through these S's again. Something's happened to our uh, Corey Osborne to get that spot up. So, while we've been uh, off watching that battle, uh, Corey Osborne's taken third spot as Lamont Turner just 
inside of Koenig. Oh, that was close. Koenig's been held up there by, is that Corey Osborne? It's taken the pressure off Reg Burke, and now Reg Burke's on the attack behind Koenig. This is a battle for third place in the DP class. Reg Burke will have a look at the end of the straight. He's well and truly got the run on him. It's going to be, oh, he's got that move deep, done. Well done. Deep under brakes. He has. Koenig has cut that corner, he's got to slow down for that. He took too much of the kerb. He's lost a spot to Mitch Avril now, so... That's back to fifth place for Koenig. Biggest loser out of all that. I don't know. with big damage, something's happened to Hamstead. He's in the pit lane. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what's going on there. We'll have to go back and have a look. Try to find a replay. He's done it. He's done it in the in the uphill left hander on the on the previous lap. He's taken a lot of curb. John Emerson actually did the exact same thing last season. So Richard Hampstead has made the same mistake as John Emerson did last season. Just got too much curb and it's bottomed the car out and lost control. Yeah, I think I may have missed the replay. Sorry, guys. Uh, it just looks like he's yeah. What I've come across is him struggling to get back in. So that's gifted, Matthew Barron. Ridgeburg side by side coming down towards Ridgeburg has lost that spot to Mitch Aberhall now. He'll be wanting to get in under brakes as Aberhall comes across. Oh. Ridgeburg's going extremely quick into that chicane, but he's immediately struggling on the exit because of the, because of the massive entry speed he's taking. You see Aberhall there's pulled a massive amount of margin on the exit of that chicane on him. Unfortunate stuff there for Richard Hampstead though, who's having a brilliant race behind Matthew Barron and Aberhall gets held up just slightly by a McLaren. We spoke about Hampstead not being overly comfortable in the cars. He hasn't done a lot of driving in this category and unfortunately he's just made a bit of an error and it's ended his race. The handling characteristics of these cars... Oh, Aberhall's oh, wide! Same place as Hampstead made the mistake. Reg Burke's going to have a run back at him. Ridgeburg's going to be on the outside though, coming into the hairpin, this is going to be inside. He's going to try and hold Aberhall in and get a bit. Oh, oh, there's contact! contact. Aberhall's are going around. They're gone. Oh, unfortunate moment there for Aberhall. Looks like he just pinched the brake a little bit. He's going to lose a spot too. Who's that? That's... Reg, Reg Burke got slightly sideways as he tried to turn in the, into the corner. Made contact with Abrahal, but Abrahal's now got passed by Christopher Osborne on the back straight as Kernich has a look at Regberg down the road ahead. So with just over 10 minutes ago, these black guys were racing for sheep stations. It's gone Here off. The race has gone off. There's Kernich cars everywhere. Too Matthew. wide again through turn one. This is insane. All up on that curb. Lucky not to spear it off into uh, Reds there. Reds, I bet you when he came and signed up to this race, did not <laughs> be in second place. No, having started 11th, he's had brilliant pace and he's worked his way forward. He's had some guys in front of him end their races with damage and he's all the way up there in second. It's an amazing drive from Reg Burke. I'm interested to see if he's got damage though from that accident with Mitchell Aberhall. He, he did get hit in the rear right corner and the car is very, very loose on entry to the uh, to the back straight there and it's just caught him out and it's put Aberhall back in the field once again after contact with the TTL car. Just have a listen in. See what we can notice out To me, the car looks fairly okay. I've, I've been seeing him brake fairly deep at the end of that back straight lap after lap, and it looks fine. The steering wheel looks fairly straight, so he should be all right. He had a bit of an oversteer moment coming off the corner, but I think that was more to do with maybe just touching the grass a little bit than uh, yeah. the car. It was more to do with uh, he, he broke. He brakes very deep there, and he cost himself time. He has to use all the kerb, and the painted ripple strip on the outside is quite slippery, so he's... Having to fight the car there, I'm not quite sure. Maybe the setup is quicker that way, but... 
Oh, he uses every bit of curb. He's got to be oh, careful not to do what his teammate Hall did. Doing the same thing as well in the background there. He's going off so easy to fire it off into the ball there, like Richard Hansen did. And yeah, there's early. we've seen plenty of guys do it in the past. There's a really nasty bump on the transverb to um, an alternate race configuration, and it upsets the cars a lot. As Koenig has got a good run on Reg Burke. He looks to the outside, now to the inside. Reg Burke doesn't cover. Koenig will have the inside line. Can he break? Oh, he's going to run too wide. Reg is going to get him job. back. Abra watch for Abra Hall behind. Abra Hall is all over them. Abra is going to have to run on Koenig. Will he have enough to get into turn one? Oh, it's careful touching that grass out there. I'd say in this battle pack at the moment, Abrahal's got the quickest car, but Koenig is certainly faster than Reg Burke. Koenig has gone wide. Abrahal goes Abrahal. around the outside. What a move. This is incredible. It's a fantastic move. Now Abrahal's on the attack. He's back up to position three after having all the dramas. He's had two, two accidents and he's still in third place. It's been a great drive. Yeah, this battle is on. Meanwhile, up the road, Matthew Barron has a huge lead. He's got a 29-second lead, and he's up there just cruising. And Dylan Sharman, also in the same boat, he has a massive lead. Oh, Kitty Engstrom as well, so... Both the leaders having uh, pretty uneventful races. Barron with a good battle early in the race with Richard Hampstead, but now just, just needs to make sure he keeps hitting his marks and bring it home clean. As the works back and David Hinkson now find themselves in a battle for 5th and 6th in the McLaren field. Yeah, Hinkson's found pace again. He, he was a little bit off the pace earlier in the race, but he's managed to get the car to come back to him and he's going back on the offensive. They don't like to be overheated and they don't like to be slid across the track. They just scream and, and give no more. So he's obviously done it. Just just pulled it off a little bit. Now he's had his oh, Kernic is at a he's at a moment. Kernic has actually had to lock the brakes up to keep the car out of the fence. Same place that Richard Amstead made the mistake earlier. Well, we're not going on board for a red place. He's coming down through the S as he goes through that right hand up. Left hander, come up. Just, oh, he's just touched that curve on the inside a little bit. Gone to lose. Oh, great effort to keep that out of the wall by Anthony Kearney. Yeah, it was a great job. Car. He will have, will have heated the tyres well and truly up, but that would be the last thing on his mind. There's a car off of the chicane up the road. It's Dylan Sharman. The leader of the McLaren class has actually outbroken himself and gone straight off the track. After giving him all those about just yeah. your lines. I think actually maybe there was a car involved there. It looks like yeah, the he's, he's he was down. passing Andrew Ren, a lapped car, and he's he's broken really deep to get the move done. But he's just outbroken himself, and instead of trying to turn it in, he just fired it across the grass to avoid contact. Yeah, definitely the safer option. He's got plenty of time in the bag just to get it back on track and keep. Him going. Oh, there's Mitch Burke and Mitch Abrahol made contact. Abrahol's had to cut the chicane. Oh, every time I go to a replay, <laughs> I have to go back to another one. It's uh, Abrol's got to slow down. He's got to give up that time he gained from the cut track. So we'll go to a replay. Coming into the first part of the S's, Reg gets held up by Andrew Rand. Abrol's dived up tight to be optimistic, and then just got a little bit. Reg drifted wide and a little bit of contact. Uh, no, uh, no foul there. Just. <laughs> Moment. Yeah, just two into one didn't work there, and um, it's given Reg Burke a little bit of a break now. He's up there in second. He's got around about a second and a half margin over Mitchell Abrahal after that little moment. Oh, catch your breath, Matt. Oh, this is this has been an insane race. It's Spoke about how challenging the track Houston. is. With a bit, with a Baron getting pushed onto the grass. A race leader being pushed oh. onto the grass as works back, tries to defend the position from David Ingston. Oh, yeah, Matthew was... Barron wisely pulled out of that one. He knows he's got 20, what, around about 30 seconds to work with now. He so he just decided to give now. the time up. Don't want to bin it now. You want to keep it clean. Oh. 
That could have been a disastrous moment for our race leader, Matthew Barron. Abrahol has... Yes. <laughs> Every bit of track and more there by Mitch Abrahol. He's back up onto the back of Reg Burke. He's got a massive pace advantage here. He just can't seem to find a way around. Every time he gets close or gets up to it, there seems to be a little bit of contact. And Mitch Abrahol seems to be the loser out of the situation. Yeah, he's got an unbelievably bent car, Mitch Abrahol, I'd Alex say. Lahm Even has a run on Anthony Koenig as well, coming down the back stretch. Koenig in the draft of the McLaren. Koenig has got good straight line speed, actually. He's oh. pulling away. Oh, it's very deep on the brakes as Alex manages to pull it up. Good job. With three minutes to go. <laughs> this is just you know, normally, just... normally I'd say the race is almost over, but it's far from over with three minutes to go. I'm interested in this battle with Mitch Abrahol and Reg Burke continues to be applying the blowtorch there. Mitch it's too much to watch. You can't keep up with the action, Seb. You're doing oh. a great job with the cameras to <laughs> actually catch half of this. <laughs> I've tried my dander, so here I was coming into the com box thinking I'd be doing a great to see Sim back in the air condition. Didn't know I'd be controlling cameras too, unfortunately, but that's my only first time directing having an internet drop out. Oh, it's Mitch Abrahol! Oh. That's a big moment coming out of that turn. <laughs> <laughs> He's pushing so hard. He's just using every bit of tyre, every bit of track at every single corner. It's a great drive. Again, though, he's just not quite close enough to Reg Burke to get the move done. And John Emerson will be hoping to uh, get in there as Corey Osborne, uh, Christopher Osborne, sorry, too many Osborns gets out of the way and lets John Emerson go and join up on that battle, hopefully. With a, a minute 50 to go, what are we? We're probably looking at one more lap and then white flag, I'd say. Yeah, around about that. It's a good point, actually, about John Emerson. He's managed to close the margin as these two have fought. And he's only around about a second away now. These guys continue to fight really hard. John Emerson may find himself back on the podium. All it will take is one McLaren as one gets out of the way. Almost an awkward position there going through those asses. Coming up on another one here. Should be an easy pass there. Every time they get up on that curb, I hold my breath. It's scary, isn't it? <laughs> The cars are so insane off that curve, they just want to go any direction but straight, but they managed to keep it out of the fence that time by. John Emerson's actually quick. Oh, as he gets extremely sideways, I was just about to talk him up and say he was quicker than the two in front of him. Obviously Kingston's got a run on Warwick Chick Pack, by the way, for um, what position's that? That's fifth and sixth in the McLaren class. These two have been battling all race long. Edward Van Belsen was involved in that early in the race. He's fallen off a bit now about Yeah, the crash one. with Brad Ryan, I think, gave him a little bit of damage, um, That's unfortunately. Mitch Abrahol has a run on Reg Burke now coming into turn one. <laughs> this will be the white flag. Here we go. Oh, this is oh, he's so close. Gets a nose chopped off by Reg Burke. Incredible driving. Oh, this Reg Burke extremely late on the brakes. He's all over him. There's nothing in that. At some point here, I'm going to have to switch to Matthew Barron to see him cross the line, but I can't take my eyes off this battle. This is being incredible. Matthew Barron down into the chicane for the final time, we believe. Yeah, he comes around, comes around the last corner. It's perfect drive from Matthew Barron, under pressure from Richard Hansen at the early race, takes a checkered flag. Incredible effort. We go back to this battle. Oh, oh. We got Warwick Chick back and Evan Hingston actually at the final chicane as well. They're absolutely fighting their way to the finish. It's the last lap for those guys. And Abrahol's having a look at Reg Burke. He's down the inside. There's contact at both halves. Reg has gone wide. This will give John Emerson. He's Should watch John Emerson the rejoin. Oh. oh, John Emerson will come in for second John Emerson's place. up to second. Unbelievable last turn. <laughs> Oh, that was an amazing battle. A shame to see it end in tears there at the end, but John Emerson picks up the pieces and, and grabs Andy second. Manages to hold off, uh, charging Alex Lam. Steve Baines is coming down for the chicane for the final time. 
Dylan Sharman also about to take the win in McLaren class. It was a dominant drive from the TTL McLaren tonight. Great drive, Dylan Sharman. Picks up the win. This kitty uh, extra looks like he's getting out of fuel. Kitty might be out of fuel. He might be looking out for Corey Osborne coming down. Battle for second overall is. Is that? It's, is he slow or is it just my eyes to see? Yeah. No, he's out. He sounds like it's out of fuel. Yeah, it is. Yes, it's coughing. It's definitely out. Well, he'll roll to the line. He'll get there just. I think Corey Osborne might be the same boat. He's he's rolling down. He's coming into pit lane. So. Yeah, he grabs grabs second position. Does Kitty Engstrom there in the McLaren class? Good drive. And Corey Osborne, knowing he's the last car in the lead lap for the uh, McLaren's managers to uh, think so. Been a great drive for Matthew Barron as he does a few victory donuts. What a race. I don't even know what to say. I'm speechless. Oh, it's been incredible. What I might actually do is I might see if I can't find a replay of that uh, going into that last chicane for you guys because that was insane. That was a... <laughs> There's a massive, massive dive there from Mitch Abrahol. He broke very, very deep on the last lap. He had to have a go, though. I'm just trying to get the, the replay up now. Is that... I believe I f not quite. I'm a, I'm a there's actually a little bit that. of, there's, there's a fair bit of um, heated discussion actually post race here, so um, between those two drivers, but it was definitely very, very close. They they had a great run all race there, and um, it was a shame to see them make contact in the final chicane. Uh, but. Overall, just dives in just a little bit of contact. John Emerson goes shooting through, comes back. So Mitch Avril rejoins the track. She just manages to hold on to it, comes around the corner, gets second place after her. And a uh, very uh, exciting race indeed. Oh, I might try and uh, run through the results, eh? Hey? So I'll go through the DPs, Matthew Barron with a dominating performance, cut, holds off for his uh, second win of the season uh, as far as I believe. John Emerson for second place, Mitch Abrahall, great race, managed to get home in third place. Reg Burke comes home fourth. fourth. Uh, Anthony Koenig holds off the char charging Alex Lam, Steve Vanus in seventh, Sean Kelly, Christopher Osborne, disappointing results for Richard Hampson. 11 laps down, go over the page to Brad Ryan and down these both 11 to 12 with disappointing races. Yeah, and in the McLaren GT3 class, we saw Dylan Sharman in the six boost TTL McLaren take a dominating win. He, he led start to finish. Kitty Engstrom there in second. Corey Osborne third. Martin Turner fourth. Warwick Chickpack fifth. David Hingston sixth. Edward Van Velsen, 7th, Bruce Joy, 8th, Wayne C. Burke in ninth, Nathan Groudon, 10th, Andrew Wren, 11th, Paul o. Martins, 12th, Fabio Gonzalez, 13th, 14th was Tom Wardrop, 32 laps down, so we had a bit of a drama there, and then Amerno Palombo, 15th, rounding out the field. What a uh, race we've had tonight, eh, man? Well, 50 minutes. Uh, that was just, it felt like about five minutes, that race. That's how quick it went for me in the commentary box tonight. It was just amazing to watch. There was battles everywhere. There was, unfortunately, a fair few accidents, but um, it certainly made for some exciting racing, although there was a few dramas between drivers and, and teams and cars, of, as we've seen in previous weeks as well, a little too much of. There was also some great driving between between drivers and a fair bit of respect shown. You know, we saw guys side by side for the best part of half a lap a few times. So great drive. Well done to Matthew Barron on the win and well done to Dylan Sharman on the win in the McLaren class. Yeah, it's been a, been an incredible race. Unfortunate with uh, 
having a little drop out midway through the race there. Sorry about that, guys. We'll uh, we'll keep working away, and um, Desi will uh, will endeavour to uh, yeah, with new new um, broadcast jitters and other things. So he's uh, definitely going to be uh, a good addition to the team. Anyway, we might wrap it up, Matt. Uh, thanks for joining us. Yeah, no worries, Seb. Um, it was good to be back in the commentary box and uh, commentating for VATs online. I always enjoy it. I always lose my voice by the end of it, but uh, it's exciting to watch and it's great racing. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Yeah, it's been, a, been an incredible night. Don't forget, Monday night we have the um, V8 Supercars. We'll be heading to Alton Park for a different layout this time for with uh, minus a chicane. So a new overtaking opportunity uh, coming down um, the back stretch. Uh, so they've got a pit stop in hand. And next Thursday night we will be back with the Grand Am at Watkins Glen for the year. Uh, second and last endurance race of the season so 80 minutes of the boot course should be some exciting thing a little bit easier to uh, overtake the lap traffic there with plenty of long straights and fast sweeping corners so after uh, this week's effort of the V8 to Watkins Glen I hope to uh, see the same thing there. Anyway you've been uh, watching Thursday Night Grand Am pre uh, presented by V8 Online sponsored by V8 Online Superstore coming soon Track Racer Thurs and Thrustmaster, your winners in the DP, Matthew Barron, and in the, uh, what am I trying to say, in the McLaren, Dylan <laughs> Sharman. Thank you very much for tuning in. Good night. Oh,